Hello, welcome to NOSA and to the third video on target point oriented modeling. What we have done before in the previous two parts is to show how to do target point oriented modeling interactively and how to run a target based workflow which is completely independent of shot and receiver locations. What we would like to do now is to take shot and receiver locations into account as well. So we go from survey planning into survey evaluation. We can do this in two different ways. We can use a shot based workflow for finding required receiver locations for a given shot setup that might be constrained by external factors like platforms or environmental zones. This is only mentioned here because we focus on this uh, uh, second workflow which is survey based. That means we can use it to show how shots and receivers of a given survey will contribute to the illumination at specific target points. What we obviously need for this is both a model and a survey and we will generate rose diagrams again, but we will also focus on the associated ones. So we can start again in this known uh, model situation, which we have seen before. This is the salt in the overburden. These are two target locations which we want to investigate a little bit further. But there are two main differences to the situation we had before. The first one is that in this case we are low rays going through the salt, so we can see how the salt will affect the ray tracing in the overburden. The second difference is that we do not allow the shots and receivers being distributed freely on the surface, but we constrain them to a survey. So in order to generate rose diagrams, which, is, which are constrained by this survey and for these two different target points, we first have to generate greens functions. So we go to the NOSA 3D main window, we go to illumination ray, and there we find the greens function generator, which is a, a reasonable simple setup. We can simply define the model we want to use as a background model and we can define a sufficiently large uh, grid for the shots and receivers which we can query from a given survey. And we can select the target points we want to investigate, so it's the point set, and we can give a name. And if we click on this we can generate a setup for the NOSA 3D batch tracer. However, in this case um, we only have two target points and as for the array we shoot from the target points, this is only two shots. So this is a setup which should be done relatively quickly in an interactive way as we finish this now. It's already done. So we can go to the workflows and we can generate a new workflow. What is this button? We can give a name again. And we select the type of workflow we want to use. So shot based would only take shots into account. And the target based is uh, shot and receiver independent. So we, what we want to use is a survey based one. We get the workflow structure in here. We can double click on each element and define it. So we can define the model. But as the greens functions are connected to the model, we can also define the greens functions here. Of course, we have to define our survey. Uh, we can give some tolerance value here. We can add some filters if you like. Uh, the target points are predefined because they were used to generate the greens functions and we have some typical parameters for the, for the maps. So in principle I could press this button now and run this workflow for these two target points, but I prefer to show you the result for a full grid of target points. So this uh, would only take a few minutes, it's a reasonable quick process, but it's just a little bit too long for a video. So we see the result of this workflow at this target location, and as this rose diagram was generated for a given survey, which is a narrow azimuth survey, also the result indicates a narrow azimuth situation. Um, so this is no surprise, but what we can do is that we can click into these cells and we can generate uh, and display the rays which are associated with, which are contributing to the result of these cells. The reason is that for the typical result of a rose diagram is to indicate the required offset and the required azimuth in order to illuminate a specific target point. The one information which is missing from the rose diagram is about a picture. We don't know exactly where to place the shots and receivers. We know about azimuth and offset, but we don't know about the location. And this help, for this it helps a lot if we can display the rays. What we get from a survey-based workflow is which uh, shot lines actually contribute to illuminating these target points. We can see that the salt in this case acts like a lens and many shot lines which are away from the target point actually still contribute because rays are focused to the target point. 
So thanks for listening. That's for so much for it. And we hope that you visit uh, NOSA websites very soon again. Goodbye for now.